Hi, in this video we are going to see some important questions that can be asked from the experiment bleeding time. So the most common question that can be asked is what is the definition of bleeding time? So bleeding time is the interval between the moment the bleeding starts and the moment the bleeding stops. So what are the different methods by which we can assess the bleeding time? It is Duke's method and Ivy's method. Okay. So the normal value or normal bleeding time by Duke's method is 1 to 4 minutes and by IV's method is 2 to 7 minutes. So remember there are two methods and the uh, bleeding time obtained, the normal bleeding time is different for both. Okay. So here we use the Duke's method okay, for which the normal time is 1 to 4 minutes. Now let's see the procedure for Duke's method. So in this we first prick the finger and then you start the stopwatch when the bleeding starts. And then mop the blood by touching the fingertip with the filter paper. So see you have to just lightly mop the blood drop using this filter paper so that you will get a stain here. And then we have to repeat it every 15 seconds till the bleeding stops. Okay. So finally we have to mark each of the uh, stain like this and write its time here. So here you can see that this is the first one. So you write as 0 seconds here. And then the second drop is 15 seconds, the third no, third part is 30 seconds and until uh, the bleeding stops. So once the bleeding stops, you can just give an empty circle here and then write the total time. Okay. So this is how your filter paper should look like for the exam. You have to, you, there should be timings, you should circle that stain as well as note the time. Okay. Now the theory questions that can be asked from this part is what is hemostasis? So the definition is hemostasis is a process of forming clots in the walls of damaged blood vessels and preventing blood loss while maintaining blood in a fluid state within the vascular system. So this is the definition from Ganon. So basically it's a process of forming clots in the walls of damaged blood vessels and preventing blood loss while maintaining blood in the fluid state within the vascular system. So another very important question that can be asked is what are the mechanism of hemostasis? So, I'll just briefly go through the steps of hemostasis. So, we know that clot is formed from fibrin and this fibrin is in turn formed from fibrinogen. So, what converts fibrinogen to fibrin? It is thrombin and thrombin in turn is formed from prothrombin. So, prothrombin is converted thrombin by a prothrombin activator which consists of a complex of activated factor 10, calcium, activated factor 5 as well as platelet phospholipids. Okay, so this is a prothrombin activator which converts prothrombin to thrombin. So here this activation of factor 10 can occur by two methods. One is the intrinsic system and the other is the extrinsic system. So intrinsic system occurs or is activated whenever there is exposure of collagen in the blood vessels. Now another method of in vitro activation of the intrinsic system is exposure of blood to glass. Okay, so this reaction starts by it catalysis by high molecular weight kininogen and calicrin in which factor 12 will be converted to factor 12a. There will be activation of factor 12. Now activated factor 12 will in turn activate factor 11 which in turn will activate factor 9. So activated factor 9 along with calcium plated phospholipids and activated factor 8 will convert factor 10 to activated factor 10. Okay, so this is the order 12, 11, 9, 8 in turn will activate 10 to 10A. Okay, now next is the extrinsic system. So the extrinsic system is triggered by tissue thromboplastin. So tissue thromboplastin will activate factor 7 to 7A and this in turn will activate 10 to 10A along with pleated phospholipids and calcium. So this is a rough outline of our uh, mechanism of hemostasis. Now one thing you have to remember is here the fibrin is stabilized by factor 13 which in turn again is activated by thrombin. So thrombin has got two functions one to activate fibrinogen to fibrin as well as activate factor 13 which in turn will stabilize this fibrin. Okay. Now other important theory questions that can be asked is how does bleeding time different, differ from clotting time? What is the interrelationship between them? And what are the aspects of hemostasis test, tested by them? 
And the question is name the condition in which only bleeding time is prolonged while clotting time is normal. See the answer for both these questions are similar. The basic principle while we test the bleeding time and clotting time is that see we know that whenever there is an injury to the blood vessel the first step is vasoconstriction right. The second step is temporary platelet plug formation okay and finally there will be clotting factors forming the clot. So these are the basic three steps of hemostasis. So this first part that is vasoconstriction up to the formation of platelet plug is assessed by a bleeding time okay whereas clotting time will assess this part wherein the clot is formed. So this is the basic interrelationship between the bleeding time and clotting time. So whenever there is any uh, changes in the vessel or whenever there are any defects with the platelets the bleeding time will be increased. Whenever there is a deficiency of clotting factors the clotting time will be increased. So this is the basic principle. So name the condition in which only bleeding time is prolonged while the clotting time is normal. So the main examples will be any, de any defects in the vessel as well as any defects with the platelets. So by, by when we say that there are any defects with platelets we mean that either the platelet count can decrease as in thrombocytopenia or its function can decrease as in thrombasthenic purpura. So if you know these basic concepts you can then elaborate on the different diseases. Okay. So when such questions are asked just think about this basic outline so you will be able to answer them. Okay. Next is what is the normal count of platelets? Enumerate the functions of platelets. What are the causes of thrombocytopenia? And what are the other tests for bleeding disorders? So all these are important theory questions which we have to prepare before appearing for the exam. Next we will move on to the next experiment which is clotting time. So the important viva questions that can be asked is what is the definition of clotting time? So clotting time is the interval between moment the bleeding starts to the moment that fibrin thread is formed. See for bleeding time it was just the moment bleeding starts to moment bleeding stops. But for clotting time is an interval between moment bleeding starts and the moment fibrin thread is formed. Okay. So the normal value is 3 to 10 minutes and here also we've got two methods. One is a capillary tube method which is a Wright's method and also modified Lee and White's method. So remember you can rem you can just uh, remember it as Wright's method and White's method. Okay, the other name for Wright's method is a capillary tube method. So next question will be what is the procedure of uh, determination of clotting time. So for that we have to prick the finger and then you start the stopwatch and the bleeding starts and touch the drop blood drop at the fingertip using one end of the capillary tube kept tilted downwards. See that is the method by which we will fill the capillary tube. We just have to keep the tube downward so that the blood will automatically get inside this tube by capillary action. And then you have to make sure that the capillary tube is at least 3 fourth fill. Only then you will be able to break uh, enough pieces to, to demonstrate the fibrin thread. Okay. So after filling the tube we have to wait for 2 minutes and then after 2 minutes we have to break the capillary tube at every 30 seconds. Okay. So the first break will be at 2 minutes. The next break will be at 2 minutes 30 seconds. 3 minutes and so on until a proper fibrin thread is formed. See here you can see the clearly that a fibrin thread is formed. Okay. So at that time you can uh, mark the clotting time. You can find out the clotting time by this uh, formation of fibrin thread. So here in this example the clotting time is 3 minutes 30 seconds. Okay. So we know that there is one more method for uh, finding out the clotting time which is the Lee and White method. So you just have to know the procedure of this method. So in this under uh, aseptic precautions we uh, do have any puncture and about 1 ml of blood is collected in each of the 3 small test tubes. Okay. And then we will note the time when the blood is taken and then keep the test tube in a water bath which is maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. Now after 3 minutes we take out the first tube and tilt it 45 degree every 30 seconds and see whether the blood has clotted. Okay, And then we continue to do, do this until the tube can be inverted without the blood flowing out and we know the time. Okay, 
So if the blood is clotted in the first tube, we then take the second tube and repeat the procedure and know the time. And the third tube here is kept as a control. Okay. So we know that the blood in the first tube will clot faster because the because of the tilting moments. Okay. So this is how the clotting time is found out by Lee and White method. So the other important theory questions that can be asked from this part are. What are the conditions in which clotting time is increased and those in which clotting time is decreased? Okay, so uh, if you remember that principle, it will be easy. If whenever the uh, there is a deficiency of clotting factors, the clotting time will increase. Okay, uh, what is hemophilia? This again, you know, it's a deficiency of this clotting factor. What is the mechanism of clotting of blood, which we've just discussed? What is the mechanism of clotting of blood in the glass capillary tube method? Okay, remember in the intrinsic system we had said that uh, the intrinsic pathway can be activated when blood comes in contact with glass, right? So this capillary tube method is actually assessing the intrinsic pathway. So that will also be asked, usually asked by the examiner. So these are some of the important theory questions. So I hope this is clear. Thank you.